Hey, Jody here. Today we're doing some uphill stick welding with 7018 332 diameter electrode. That's 2.4 millimeter electrode. At the end of the video, I'll talk a little bit about a couple of features that are on a lot of stick welders these days. Hot start and arc control, also called the dig function. So we'll do, we'll do a two-pass vertical T-joint. I'll talk about things like electrode angle, arc length, and all that stuff. I'm going to try to cover a lot of basics that I might tend to skip over sometimes. Let's do it. I've got this 210 MP set to 95 amps and I honestly probably should have gone up maybe five. It would have probably wound up with a smoother overall end result but 95 was close. I actually put a meter on this and it was closer to 100 amps actual readout but the machine read out 95. And so for the root pass I'm just keeping a really nice tight arc very little side to side motion at all just enough to sort of feel that flux scrub and uh, move it very slowly not to leave any undercut now let's look at a restart here real quick i start ahead i try to get all my arc strikes right in the weld area where i'm going to weld over top of them and you can see me kind of burning all through all that crap right here a little bit of a close-up you don't want to leave any arc marks you want to weld back over them as a rule Arc strikes are considered a defect. I mean, I don't know of any welding code that permits arc strikes uh, near the weld. So you want to weld over top of them. And, you know, if you get one, you get one. You have to grind it out. And, but on a welding test, you may not be permitted. It may fail you. So that's the first pass. We'll, we'll come over top of that now with a little second pass with a little bit of a Z-weave. Didn't change any heat. Amperage is still at 95 and I kind of wish I had maybe another 5 amps to be honest. You can watch the puddle just start to cool behind, start to follow me as I go across. Um, if it follows you too much, that means you're too cold. So it's just, it's just starting to, to cool. And so it's, it's close, it's close enough. But 2 or 3 more amps probably would have made it a little smoother. So with that rod angle here is a slight push. It's always more than I think. That's why sometimes I just shoot for 90 degrees and I always wind up with a push. We're going to show a restart here. It's just as important to be able to make a good restart as it is anything else. So I'm going to cue stick this rod a little bit with my other hand. I've got it run in between my first two fingers there. I'm going to light up right ahead and drag it right down into the crater and then try to just carry on as if I never stopped. Now the quicker you can do this after you stop, the hotter, the, the hotter that crater is going to be and the better restart you'll have. If you wait and let it cool off too much, it's kind of tough to make a good restart. And we'll talk about hot start, the hot start feature on machines a little bit later in the video. Okay, so that one's done. We'll chip it and wire wheel it real quickly. Shine it up a little bit and get a little bit closer look at it. And it's not, you know, not a blue ribbon weld. Not the worst thing I've ever done, not the best. It just makes me want to practice some more. And that's what I'll do. In fact, I'll, I'll uh, try some different machines and, and uh, demonstrate the hot start and arc force maybe in future videos. One way to think of all the variables that go into stick welding is the acronym CLAMS. C-L-A-M-S. So yeah, that covers current, length of arc, angle of travel, or angle of electrode, manipulation of electrode, and speed of travel. You could pretty much pigeonhole every variable when it comes to stick welding into that CLAMS acronym. So for instance, C stands for current. We can talk about polarity, amperage, and the settings that go along with current, like hot start and arc control, also called dig function. But let's talk about let's talk about hot start and the dig function right now. I'm going to show you in just a second two different machines that I have that have this have both of these features on them, but they're laid out different and the adjustments are different on the panel. So what they do is basically hot start is what it says. Hot start allows you to start hotter for a second or two than your, than your panel amperage. You can set it, on some machines, you can set it yourself on how hot, 150% of your amperage, you know, 110%. Set it a little bit hotter, it makes a lot of sense to start off really hot, but then it, after a second, it drops right back down. You know, you set it for two seconds, that allows you to burn through any, any leftover slag you didn't get off of the crater or anything, but then it drops right back down to what you have set on the panel. Arc control, also called dig, is a feature that will allow you to set the crispness, the harshness, or the softness of the arc. And it's a useful feature, but it's kind of unnecessary for a lot of people. 
So a lot of welders have learned that they can tighten the arc up and cool the puddle off or, or lengthen the arc and heat the puddle up because it changes voltage. What the dig function or arc control fu function does is it senses the change in voltage. When you have a long arc, you have a higher voltage. When you have a tighter arc, you have a lower voltage. It senses the lower, the drop in voltage, and it bumps the amperage up to keep you from sticking the rod. So if you're welding a root pass and you're trying to hold a tight arc to cool the puddle off and your machine's bumping that amperage up, that might be a good thing, it might be a bad thing. You know, so you're just going to have to play with it. Let's take a look at two machines that I have here. They're laid out both very differently on the hot start function and the arc control function. All right, this is a Thermal Arc Fabricator 252. I think you can still get them, but why do that? They have very much newer machines now. I think ESOB absorbed this machine. So the, the hot start has two settings. It has a time function. It goes up to two seconds. And it also has a percentage function of the amperage that you have set. So I can go 125% or 100% or way higher. And uh, it's kind of a cool thing to be able to set both. And so for stick welding, you know, a second and a half or two seconds actually is pretty good. All right, this machine's laid out a little bit differently. It's a little bit more simplistic. Again, this is the machine I use for the video. 95 amps. I set hot start here, and it's got arc force also. But if I, if I, if I select hot start, then it, it only gives me a setting of 1 or 0 to 10. So I don't know what that is. If it's preset for uh, the time function, and I just, you know, I, I, 10 is hotter and 0 is not as hot, I guess. I wasn't able to find that information in the manual. Um, arc force. Uh, usually arc force is just the higher the setting, the crisper the arc, you know, and the lower the setting, the softer the arc. And they generally recommend using a lower setting for 7018 low hydrogen and a higher setting for 6010, you know, cellulose electrodes. All right, now let's talk about length of arc. You know, that's really important when you, especially important when you get to welding out of position, vertical up and overhead. You can get away with a lot of, a lot of mistakes flat position. A long arc you can still make a pretty good looking weld. A long arc you know, on vertical uphill is really difficult to make a good looking weld. So keep that arc tight. What I mean by a tight arc, I don't mean jam it in there. I mean, I mean hold it in there where you can almost feel that flux kind of scrub on the toes of the weld and here and there you can almost feel it rub. Remember that arc is burning off electrode up inside there. So you, even when you don't think you have any arc length, you've, you've got some. So try to keep a tight arc Here's a tight arc, a little close up of it. I'm, I'm not really jammed in there to where the rod's about to snuff out or anything, but I'm holding it pretty tight. I can feel the flux bump and scrub here and there. Let's look at now what happens when you hold a long arc. I've still got it tight here. Now pull it away right here. This is too long of an arc. And now it's starting to fall out. There are BBs hitting the, hitting the ground. Uh, spatter jumping out. It feels like it's going to lose control and just blob out of there. And in fact, it did. There's a big, big crater where a big blob of metal fell out. Not to mention, it just looks like crap. Angle of electrode, again, very forgiving in the flat position. When you're doing vertical, you want to keep it. I always shoot for straight in. And I, I find that when I'm watching my stuff, my, when I'm watching myself weld later, I always tend to have a little bit of a push angle even when I think I'm straight in. So if I shoot for straight in, I'm almost sure I'm going to have a little bit of push, but not too much. And that's what I do on vertical uphill, slight push. Uh, overhead, overhead welding, you know, I don't like to use much angle, a slight drag. Again, a tight arc. Okay, so that covers CLA. What about M? Manipulation of electrode. Sometimes you don't want to do any manipulation. Sometimes procedures are written where there's no manipulation of electrode allowed. It's specified, in which case you just, you just want to drag it straight up. You need to know how to do both, stringers and weaves. So that's manipulation of electrode. In this video, you saw me doing a almost just a stringer, uh, no movement going the first pass, and then a little bit of a slight weave for the second pass. It's good to know. All right, S is speed of travel. Basically, with stick welding, you go slow enough not to leave undercut. And if you go too slow, you're going to build up too much heat. You're going to build up too much metal. But, um, you know, you, that's just one of those things that's going to come with practice. You'll keep an eye on the toes of those welds uh, to make sure you're not leaving undercut. And also, cleaning mill scale off helps a lot in not leaving undercut. Yes, stick welding will burn through mill scale. It'll, it'll, you're a lot less likely to leave undercut if you don't have mill scale and some codes require removal of mill scale on structural welds. 
That's all I got for you today. I hope it was helpful. If you thought it was helpful, hit that subscribe button. See you next time.